Hello and welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be discussing tensile strength and Young's modulus, the world of pulling things apart. What is tensile strength? Ultimate tensile strength, abbreviated UTS, is the strength with which an object or structure resists being pulled apart. And that pulling apart force is called a tensile force. So the ability of an object or structure to resist a tensile force is the tensile strength of that object, which makes sense. Tensile strength is concerned with the elongation and deformation when these tensile forces are applied. As with all things in reality, if you put enough force on something, eventually something has to give. It's going to break or twist or turn or in this case, pull apart which is called deformation. Tensile strength is tested independently from compression strength, which is pushing things together, and shear strength, think sliding. If something kind of slides apart, that's a shearing force. Most metals change shape slightly before breaking apart. This is called plastic deformation. A lot of things do something called necking as well, which is when the diameter gets very small in a certain spot, but remains larger around it. Materials that don't deform plastically are brittle, as opposed to things that do deform plastically are ductile. So plastic deformation is when something changes shape and it can't go back. So it's beyond elastic. If something changes shape elastically, it can go back to the original shape. Think of a rubber band. But if something is under tensile strength, and can't deform at all and just breaks, it's very brittle. And the picture I have, the food brittle, because imagine trying to pull that apart. It would resist some, but it would just break. You wouldn't be able to stretch it out like you would other items. Those objects that do deform plastically some before breaking are more ductile. So if peanut brittle is brittle, I would say the comparable food for ductility would be maybe perhaps a taffy of some sort. You can pull it apart some, but it will still break apart. So if tensile strength is an object's resistance to being pulled in a tensile direction, so being pulled apart along a certain axis, what is Young's modulus? Well, Young's modulus measures an object's resistance to being deformed elastically, so non-permanently. This is the phase before it deforms plastically in a tensile way. So Young's modulus specifically refers to tensile strength. It's measured by the stress-strain curve. Stress is the force put on an object, force divided by the area of an object. It's a cross-sectional force. Strain is how much the object deforms, change in length divided by the original length. So you put stress on an object, and because of that stress, the object experiences strain. So Young's modulus is literally a measure of the stress over the strain of an object, how much force it takes to make an object strain a certain amount. Here are some examples of Young's modulus you would see for certain objects. So for plastic type 1, if you have a bottle or something that has a triangle with a 1 on it, it has a Young's modulus of roughly 116,000 pounds per square inch. So to pull that plastic, it would take a great amount of force. Nylon can be anywhere between 290 and 580,000 pounds per square inch. Human bone, 2.9 million pounds per square inch. That's a good thing. So it is 20 times harder to pull apart your bone than it is to pull apart plastic type 1. I'm happy about that. What about diamond? Can you imagine how hard it would be to pull apart a diamond? Well, diamond can be anywhere between 152 and 175 million pounds per square inch. So diamond can be 70 to 80 times harder to pull apart than your bone. So we have all these tensile strengths and Young's moduluses for different materials, but how do we even determine these in the first place? Well, one machine used is called a tensile test machine. That seems obvious enough. There's a picture immediately to the right of that. With the blue background, those show the specimen you use to test tensile strength. They're small cross-sectional pieces of material that are tested. The picture on the far right shows a machine that would pull them apart. 
pretty fun to watch because when it finally fractures, it makes a really loud noise. And this whole testing of tensile strength is a whole nother subject in itself. You have the anatomy of the cross-sectional pieces, you have proper testing methods, software, appropriate methods to use. But here's a basic on some of it. When it comes to the cross-sectional pieces, those bits on the very end, the thicker sections, are called the shoulders. Then you have a diameter or width of the center section, you have a reduced section, you have a width of the grip, you have a grip section, gauge length. So there's a lot that goes into this. It's a very technical way to test for a tensile strength or Young's modulus. But the basics of it are this. That machine knows the amount of force it is putting on the object. It pulls it apart with a certain tensile force. That's the stress it's measuring. Then, based on the distance the vice grips move, it knows the strain the object is experiencing. So when you do the tensile test on an object, the machine will plot the stress-strain curve for you, and that tells you a lot about the material. Here's a very simple breakdown of what a typical stress-strain curve would look like. First, you start with a straight line. So look in the bottom left of that graph. It's a very linear straight line because it's a linear relationship between stress on the y-axis and strain on the x-axis. Every certain amount of stress you put on it, the strain reacts appropriately. Then you get to point three there. That's the proportion limit of this linear relationship. So after that, the stress will affect the strain of the object differently, of course. The material begins to deform. Point two is when the material begins to deform plastically, so it's not elastic anymore. There's no going back in shape. It won't be like a rubber band returning to its original form. It's a permanent plastic deformation. Then it begins on that curve you see after point two. At point one, that is the tensile strength of the object. That is the most the object can possibly resist being pulled apart. After that point, the strain is increasing quicker than the stress. So it's being pulled apart at a rate the stress cannot increase at. It just can't be. It's pulling apart and the force is lessening because it's pulling apart. Point four is the fracture point. So at that point, the material completely breaks apart. And when you're testing it, it makes a really loud noise. Pretty interesting. What are the practical applications and implications of tensile strength and Young's modulus? Well, they both fall under a category called materials engineering, or the science of materials. It's very important for the world we live in. Product designs really have to take these things into account. So as we go faster, make machines more powerful, the materials they're made out of really, really matter. Think about all the materials over time that humanity has created and how they've pushed us forward as a species. Steel allowed us to build higher and better skyscrapers. Diamond allowed us to do a lot of electrical applications. These materials really matter, and we need to know about the materials to plan appropriately. And of course, with all things, you need a quality side. So it's good to know these measurements and have these tools so that you can test the materials you're making to make sure they meet the standards we demand of them. Material science is an area that I think is pretty advanced, but it's very cool to get into because as we learn to mass produce newer and newer materials, the kinds of technologies and things we can make are amazing. One I'm excited for is carbon fiber. I have a separate video on that. But as we see carbon fiber become more and more commonplace, you're gonna have some really cool properties, very lightweight vehicles and other items like that that will really just push the limits of how we can live our lives. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you now understand the basics of tensile strength and Young's modulus, what they mean and why we need to know them. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm doing a few videos a week for the summer of 2016 on a variety of topics. Have a great day.